Hey everyone, welcome back to another video on the second channel. Today will be a, I guess, pilot episode slash a bit of a trial, just to see um, how this uh, showcase, uh, showcase video will work. Basically what I want to do is something in between a let's play, but also a review. And the main thing I want to do is show you how the game flows, so that way you can kind of, you know, understand or maybe get a picture of how the game works. In this case, it's Astral Chain for the Nintendo Switch. I did a video on that, as you may or may not know. It's called I Finally Played Astral Chain. It's a hack and slash slash... No, no, that's not a good way of wording it. It's a uh, hack and slash or also known as a beat-em-up, though I guess technically some people think they're different, but, you know, it's like an action sort of game. You know, I'll overlay something right now just so you can see some gameplay footage. So it's fast-paced, it's very fun, at least in my opinion. Uh, but I'll let you know a little bit in terms of the background of the game just so you know what you're getting into here. Astral Chain is basically about a bunch of people in a specific branch, I guess you could say, or task force of the police called Neuron. They exist because the world, which is like a futuristic setting, is a, a bit of a in a bit of a dire state there. Chimeras, which are creatures from another dimension, are invading our dimension. And it's probably best if that does not happen. So basically uh, there's certain people who are able to capture and control Chimeras themselves, uh, then they're called Legion, and you can use them, hence the chain part of it, you know, because as of, like, you're controlling them. And the other dimension is called the Astral Plane, hence the Astral part of the title as well. So this is an early mission here, I don't want to do any spoilers, so I'm not going to really go into, you know, any cutscenes or anything, I'm just going to show you the game flow. And, uh, it's not the same all the time, but usually... There's a, you know, there's a somewhat predictable pattern in terms of, um, you know, what you need to do, which is, you know, there's nothing bad against the game. That's just usually how that works for, with most games here. So I'm replaying an earlier mission, as I said. Uh, the game flow works like this. You start off in HQ, you get your assignment, you go on to um, the Ark, it's called, an artificial island where the rest of humanity resides. And then the, you know, chimeras and all that good stuff, uh, or bad stuff rather, you know, shows up and you need to beat the hell out of that thing, those things. You also have to do a bit of investigation. Let's just start out at HQ. So it's laid out in a bunch of different floors. I think it's the basement level we're at here. This is the main command room. I'm not going to go in there right now um, because, well, that is a, there's a cutscene there. I'm just going to probably skip it. So you can do a whole bunch of things. You can think of this as your RPG town. So, you know, if you want to change clothing or whatever, you know, go right ahead. Um, this does not do anything with gameplay. You can do costume. I haven't unlocked any costumes yet. There's hairstyles, you know, skin color, eye color, that sort of stuff. You can get supplies as well, so, uh, like, let's see here, you can go to the medical thing. Medical thing. You know what I mean. And then you can get a whole bunch of stuff here in terms of healing items and all that, so that's good. Uh, grenades as well, you can upgrade your gun. So there's something called the X baton, so you can either, it's like a melee thing, or it's a shooty thing, so... It's up to you what you do there in battle. Vending machines talk. You'll find them all over the place with different personalities. Um, from what I can tell, it's basically um, status enhancing stuff. So if we have a quick look here, see, it says this uh, will refill. Okay, uh, what it says here, a liquefied data stew that boosts energy refill for one minute. There you go. So it doesn't heal you but uh, there's some effects that are positive. I'm in casual uh, difficulty mode. I've never needed to use this at all. But, you know, when things are harder, you probably need to. Um, 
you know, resort to a drink. There's also toilets here. Uh, yes, there's somebody behind that wall. I'll uh, leave that as your homework assignment to figure out what that is about. <laughs> and uh, there's multiple floors here too. So basically it's like a it's like a cooler way of making a menu. You can think of this entire thing not just as a town, but as a menu. Um, so this is where we are right now. There's a training floor. And this is uh, quite a linear game, but you can do side cases and stuff. So as you can see right there, there's like a side quest going on right now here. If I were to, you know, speak to, um, speak to Julia there. Uh, there's also, the, like, the training facility basically allows you to just, uh, have a look. Oh, yeah. I'm not gonna explain Lappy right now. <laughs> but, yeah, you can look through here to see how, uh, you know, if you just forget how stuff works. So, yes, let's end that for now. No worries, I'll be back. Oh yeah, once we're in the battle area, I can even show you the guns, so... This, there's that. There's, uh... Guns, which is basically what I use exclusively. And, uh, there's a second, like, broadsword-style expaton as well. Uh, you can upgrade that too, I should have mentioned. So, you know, all of that stuff you can do here. You can fast travel too. So, uh, you know, go to different areas so you don't need to walk around, because eventually, maybe comes a little bit of a hassle, but I don't mind walking around. Um, yeah, you can also feed cats. That's a good thing. Uh, but I think what we should probably... Well, I'll show you the some other parts here, too. So we're in the training place here. Let's go down to the garage. So sometimes you just need to go here to, you know, head out. There isn't that much gameplay stuff going on here. That's probably good to explore just to see if there's any side quests. Then uh, there's the very top of the building, which this elevator gets to very quickly. And uh, basically, that's sometimes an area where you head out as well. You know, look around for some side quests. But I think it's time to actually head out and uh, take a look at some more gameplay that isn't just in the safe zone. All right, here we are in... Um the overworld. So, uh, basically, uh, the mission requires some investigation, which is perfect because that's usually what happens before battles. Um, so we need to question some people. It's not like, you know, full on LA Noir, but it is, uh, you know, it, it uh, you do have to speak to people. Um, well, let's cross that road before it turns red. Because, uh, yeah, like, um, it's, it's required to ask people for info to uh, advance the story, and then, um, uh, by the way, we can pick up trash here as well, so, there we go. And let's throw that in the bin. Sometimes you have to be, like, a bit, I don't know if uh, the word tricky is, um, is the correct word. But uh, you do have to, you know, try out a few different ways to solve, like, really simple puzzles to get information, sort of stuff. So something that you can use here is, uh, you can also uh, turn something on called the iris, which is a way to just scan for stuff. Um, so it allows you to see certain items and things. You know, things like that. It's like an augmented reality thing. It comes in helpful in all kinds of situations. Usually the game will tell you when to use it, and it's up to you if you want to use it or not. You can use it to, for example, in battle, um, get info like, uh, you know, how much health is left. And uh, uh, for these people, for example, here, uh, you can see uh, apparently there are three sizes. <laughs> uh, yeah, f once it's fully upgraded... Uh, you can see a whole bunch of stuff, as you can see here. There's like some instances, like, where it's helpful, where you can get some info uh, in one of the early quests, but anyways. So, I don't know, let's just question somebody here. There we go. Sometimes some citizens will give you information that you've already gotten. Uh, and the map, by the way, you can see, uh, when I 
that's the wrong button. Here you can see some objectives and stuff. So these are the ones I've done already in a past playthrough. Right, so here is a uh, spot right now where we can see a portal that goes to the different uh, dimension. Sometimes the battles take place here in the, uh, let's call them overworld, but sometimes they're in the dimension. Um, they're largely the same wherever they are, so this is a good place to show you, you know, what that looks like. Hopefully there's not a cutscene. If there is, I'll cut it out. Maybe that's why it's called a cutscene. Here's the trippy loading screen. Alright, so this is the astral plane. Um, here's a, a good highlight of the bug that just happened. I don't know if it's a bug, but it, look, the, I'm, I'm using this thing here. Whoops, that's not it. Um, uh, 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 this button. <laughs> I always forget. ZR. But yeah, it always, or a lot of time, defaults to that. I just want the gun. So, anyways. So yeah, this is what it looks like. Um, it's a... Uh, it's a very interesting looking dimension sort of thing. So, um, this is red matter, which you can pick up. You know, gives you some points for your mission. That's like stuff that com uh, contaminates uh, the world, so... Well, technically we're in the Chimera's world, so... Whatever, it, it, it's fine. Let's just do that. Um, this is also now a good spot to show you the different abilities that you can do, because there's like platforming involved here. Um, so, if I bring this up, you can see all the different legion that you can have. I don't think that's a spoiler to show. Uh, so, I just hold down the Y button, and then with my left analog stick, I just select. So, the sword, for example, what you can do there is, uh, they all have abilities, so you can cut, like, in a straight line and stuff. So, for example, you could cut that over there if you're closer. Um, if you don't want to do that... Oh, that's uh, dodge. Uh, what button do I press again? Oh yeah, just L again. And then, uh, this one for example, does arrows, so you can aim. There we go. That does that. And oh, here we go, we have a fight yetzt. So, uh, now, yetzt now. <laughs> Some German slipped out. Um, I should say, I should pause right now. So, these are all the different legion. They all have different abilities. Um, and I'm just going to show you some basic stuff. So, they fight alongside you, and uh, they can take the brunt of the damage in a lot of occasions, and uh, they're very useful. So, I'll just show you what a uh, fight looks like. Mainly, it's just attacking and letting the uh, Legion do its thing. So, we can uh, lock onto this thing. Then we do this, then we can now see its health. So, the Iris is very useful. Oh, wow. Really, uh, strong. Interesting. Well, hopefully we'll get to some stronger enemies in a bit. Or actually, I can also overlay some stuff, uh, that I can show you there. As well, so... Um, you know, there's no rules. I don't need to do everything, you know, unedited. But basically, uh, what you can do is... Uh, so you can do attacks, uh, with, like, ranged. You can do melee. Uh, you can either have your... Legion stand back or go in. Uh, usually just, you know, let them go in. They can only be out for a certain amount of time, and you can see that timer deplete. So you just, you know, just reel them back in with the R button. It charges up pretty quick. You know, let them out again and go on, do your business. And business is saving the world in this case. I barely use my baton at all. Uh, for, uh, for melee, I just used ranged, as you can see, but uh, technically, you know, Hitting melee, as you can imagine, is a bit stronger because, you know, whacking something is stronger than a bullet somehow. But technically this is not a bullet. Whatever. It's a game. It's not important. What you can also do is uh, you can do finisher attacks when they're, as you saw with that really weak enemy we were dealing with earlier. That recharges your health, which is useful. You can switch Legion on the fly too because, uh, you know, sometimes there's instances where you need to... Uh, or you, you know, you might want to use the abilities of, uh, of one of the other legion there. You can wrap enemies around, uh, with a chain. So, uh, that 
keeps them in place. And just to get back into the actual game here, um, something else that you can do, uh, which I'll just demonstrate, is that, is that uh, you can do like jumps and stuff with them. So you can position them how you want. Let's say there's a gap here. You can have them out like this, position them over, because they can. some of them can fly, like this one, for example. Let's say there's a gap, and then we can jump over like that. So, pretty cool. There's items dotted around as well, which you might want to collect. There's more red matter. Uh, let's collect that. Let's do this bit of... Uh, Wow, almost missed it. That's great. Oh, yeah. We gotta do all of them. Yeah, so stuff like that exists. And, uh, you do that throughout there. There's, uh, different paths, as you can see. We could go here. Ah, that didn't end well. Um, and a lot of times you'll find items and things of that sort. See? There we go. There's some more red matter we can pick up if we want to. There's a vending machine. Oh yeah, there we go. I knew there was something here. I like these vending machines. They're great. Poor guy. Every time I see... Not every time, but a lot of times when I see a vending machine, I just talk to them for, you know, even if I don't need to. Um, you can also do jumps, like, around corners and stuff with this. So, that's something to keep in mind that you can do. Yeah, so this is not a bad example of, you know, some of the stuff that you can do. There's no fall damage, by the way. That's important. If you block on time as well, that sometimes works, which is... Something I can't always do very well. So, I apologize in advance for what this looks like. There we go, we get health that we don't need. Ah, it goes down! Oh, jeez. Come on, analyze it. Since this is not really super hard difficulty levels, um, this, you know, this isn't too difficult. Oh, yeah, I'm also higher level than I need to be in this. Because I'm replaying something from earlier in the game. But yeah, that's all, you know, some good examples there of the gameplay. Uh, I hope that this video doesn't, like, s seem like I'm condensing the game into, uh, I don't know, into something more simplistic than it actually is. Like, a lot of games have a simple game flow, but they're enjoyable, and I find this highly enjoyable. So, but yeah, um, I think that covers pretty well, you know, uh, how the gameplay works. Um, well, I can tell you a couple more things. Now, of course, the enemies get tougher, and there's different kinds that you have to deal with in different ways. I can, you know, some overlay some footage of some boss fights there. Uh, there's uh, often a trick on how to... Not always a trick, but, you know, there's certain things that you uh, might want to do occasionally. I think it's easier because I'm in casual mode. I can just always get their health down without having to, you know, chain their legs or things like that. Though, you can do all of that stuff. It's also fun doing the side quests. Um, uh, there's like mini games where you uh, uh, do like shooting mini games. Sometimes you have to find like a lost dog or a lost cat. And I think the world is actually pretty immersive as well. So, and because it's replayable, and, uh, yeah, I think, uh, there's, you know, it's also fun unlocking things, too. But I think that covers, you know, a lot of, uh, I think that covers the game flow pretty well. I mean, I could show you some menus here, too. Uh, like, you know, you can go here, you can, there's, you can assign skills, you can have certain abilities. Like, uh, you know, I, uh, some of these I should probably have, uh, looked at, uh, uh, like, in a bit deeper fashion, perhaps, but, you know, it's the sort of stuff that, uh, that you learn as you play. I don't think, uh, you know, you need to know this stuff, you know, to see if you find this game enjoyable or not. 
There's also like skill trees. Um, how do you? It's for like each legion. Is it legion learning? Yeah, it is. So yeah, you can you can branch out. You get gene code by defeating enemies, which on the bottom left there you can see how much you have. So I could, for example, just be like, attack up, 450 gene code. Yeah, no worries. Let's do that. Whoops, if I press the correct button. I'm not sure why you have to hold that down. Seems like a waste of time, but whatever. Yeah, do that a bunch of times. And uh, you've got yourself some more impressive legions. There's also a co-op mode, by the way. Um, so, uh, you know, each, everybody takes a Joy-Con and someone's a player, someone's the Legion. Technically, both are players, but you know what I mean. Uh, somebody takes the, uh, the, the uh, controller for the player character while the other person does the Legion. So that's pretty cool. I like that idea, but yeah, I've never tried it. And something that I find interesting, which may not come across in this kind of video, is that um, these battle segments can be quite long. It's like there's no way to get out of them, so it feels like it's more of a journey. And then once you reach back at HQ, it feels like a bit of a relief. And it's just nice to, you know, just walk, roam around and maybe do some quests there. But while you're outside, you know, doing your thing in the over uh, overworld is probably not the correct word, but you know what I mean. When you're on uh, out on a mission there, there's a bit more tension because you can't go back, and that's a real strength with that game. I guess this is kind of uh, a uh, pilot to see how these kinds of episodes will work, you know, with the gameplay and game flow showcase. I think right now I'm very careful trying to be very complete. But at the same time, I haven't scripted anything either. I guess in a way it's like as if I'm showing, you know, a friend what a game is like. Um, and then, uh, but I accept I do that with the internet. But that's that for now. Let me know what you think of this, you know, this format. And I'm going to try some other games too. Some more simple, some more complicated. And I think pretty soon I'll figure out, you know, a format that works well. And I've also been thinking that maybe I should get a webcam and point it at a, you know, my controller or keyboard and mouse, depending what game it is. And then I can show you just some shots while I'm talking about how, uh, how it is to use certain buttons, because there's certain things with the controls that are perhaps not easily explained, or at least I can't explain them that well. But that's a thought, maybe later on as things pick up. But thanks for watching, and I'll see you again in the next video.